I'm Willie Vogt, I'm with Farm Progress, and I'm at a secret undisclosed location, not really. I'm in Mason, Ohio at Rise Aero Technologies. I'm with Mick Cowitz, the CEO and founder of this organization, and we're standing in front of, what are we standing in front of, Mick? Well, you're standing in front of the first prototype of the Rise Recon. Uh, this is V1, the first version of it. It is an all-electric, ultralight, vertical takeoff and landing vehicle. Okay, that's great. Why am I talking to you? Because I'm with Farm Progress. Are you looking at agriculture for this? We absolutely are looking at agriculture for this. In fact, they are our first target market. Uh, we believe that uh, flying a vehicle like this should be for people with a purpose. And we also believe anybody should be able to fly it. But to start out and to really get this into the market, we wanted to target the most innovative users in the country. And that's farmers, believe it or not. A lot of people don't realize it. First in using uh, satellite imagery, first in using automation and autonomy uh, with farm equipment, and people who actually respect and care for equipment that they have. And so we feel like this is a great vehicle for them uh, to be able to use for any number of purposes uh, on the farm. Now, a couple exciting things about this unit. I actually don't need a pilot's license to fly it, right? No, you do not. You can be just anybody with about uh, 45 minutes of training. In fact, I could train you to just start flying it in about 10 minutes. Uh, we actually walked through it a little earlier, and I think you actually could get in it if your wife would allow you. Right, that's not happening. Yeah. <laughs> so, but you could get in it, and you could fly it with pretty much ease. So it doesn't take a lot. Uh, we like to take people through uh, the airspace and safety and emergency procedures just to make sure you're as safe as possible, but it really doesn't take much to fly. It's actually more directional than flying. And that, because it's, it classifies as an ultralight, which is different than other things we might have seen in the EV to electric v vertical takeoff and landing kinds of equipment. They're a little bigger and they're a different kind of thing. This is an ultralight. That's correct. But it's different than any ultralight I've ever seen. We've got six, six motors, they're battery operated, right? Yeah, so this is a six redundant uh, propulsion systems. It has a very uh, high fidelity artificial intelligence supercomputer essentially in it yep. that is tracking every activity of each one of these props, uh, all your attitude, your pitch, your yaw, it's making sure you are gonna stay in the air and stay in the air safely. You can fly this in the air and let your hands off the sticks, and even if a big wind comes, it'll keep you exactly where you are, keep you level, and keep you safe. I can think of other op a range of potential uses for this, uh, but let's get to something that's really interesting about this unit, and that if you look at the base of each of the, the rotors and the bottom of this, it floats. It does float. It actually can land and take off from water as well as any terrain. Uh, the idea behind this is that we can add a little extra weight if we make it float on water. So uh, the limit for ultralight from the FAA is really 254 pounds, and we're about 285 pounds. Uh, we get to add that extra uh, weight because of the floats. Okay, that makes sense. I just, I think farmers watching this will be curious about what you're thinking about. I can see this as a, a field scouting tool. I can really see this in the, the range lands, looking at range pasture, as well as looking for cattle. I think sure. that's an opportunity. But when we talk about this system, these are, there are six batteries on this. What's the operating time? What are you looking at for that? Well, first off, there are six batteries, but they are six removable, rechargeable batteries. Okay. So just like uh, your lawnmowers with the removable battery pack, each one of these pods has its own independent propulsion system with its own independent battery pack. Uh, the system comes with a charging station, so you can have those stations placed uh, throughout your farmland. And uh, you can have it controlled via a solar power unit, and it can be a weatherproof system, so you can keep batteries at a very reasonable cost out in the field, so if you fly 20 miles out, and you don't have enough range to get back, no worry for range anxiety. Just pull the packs, plug them in, take the packs that are out there and plug them in the vehicle and you're ready to go. Yeah, I'm thinking, I think Montana and Wyoming, but I also know some larger operations in Iowa and Indiana that would also like something like this, definitely to do range, to make the range go. Um, top speed for this bad boy? Uh, top speed would be 63 miles an hour or 50 knots per the FAA. We're limited, so it's governed at that speed. So the AI is not gonna let me Juice it. Nope, okay. you are not going to get to go faster than you want. Uh, it is going to limit you, and we make sure that limit is maintained is it's an Internet of Things object, and so we're tracking everything, and we're letting you know what you're doing. We'll tell you your performance numbers, make sure you understand the vehicle is healthy uh, and able to fly. Well, that'll be good, especially in those early units as you learn about warranty and durability. I mean, we all know what these are like, but i got to tell you, and I'm an ag journalist, and I've broken in my own fair share of equipment, so we get this out on a farm, we're going to find out how good this 
this stuff really is. That's exactly right. And that is why the farm community is really important. And this year, we're actually putting it into some uh, friendly fields uh, in order to test it, to get dirt in it, get some corn stalk in it, get some soybeans uh, in it so we can see how it really feels and how it really operates. It works great uh, in general land, uh, but we need to see what it does in farmland before we put it in the hands of farmers for real. Now you'll be flying this at the Farm Progress Show every all three days. That's correct. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, August 30, 31st, and September 1st. It's going to be in corn stalks. You're going to be rising off of a recently harvested field. No problem? No problem. You've done that before? Absolutely. We have done it before. <laughs> That's yeah. cool. Yeah. One of the interesting things, um, you know, farmers think about maintenance. Farmers think about upkeep. Now, these removable batteries, mm -hmm. that's exciting because if something goes bad, it wouldn't be a big deal to swap in a new battery. Correct. That's fine. Electric motors, they're actually pretty simple to um, get them out and refurb them and have a farmer put them right back on, right? Listen, uh, farmers who are taking care of internal combustion engines, hydraulic systems, implements that are way more sophisticated with way more moving parts than this motor has. <laughs> uh, this motor is a 52 pair pole motor. Uh, really the only thing to maintain in it is ball bearings. But if you don't want to do that, just unbolt it and ship it to us and we'll ship you, cross ship you another set and then we'll refurb it and you can either keep the one or get yours back if you want. Uh, we're trying to make this uh, as simple as possible for farmers to maintain. Now obviously we're looking at V1. You're working on other more recent prototypes, um, but you're looking at some durability issues. How long will this? How long will those batteries last? And it's a goal anyway. Uh, so the batteries will, will probably last about four and a half years, depending, of course, upon load. The vehicle and all the other components for about 2,500 hours uh, easily. Now, I mean, the frame will last longer than that if you take care of it. Oh yeah. And all the electronic components will. The motors are really the next big piece that you have to watch, and the propellers, uh, obviously, uh, what kind of terrain you're taking off and laying if you're in uh, you know light stone and it's constantly getting nicked up by stone you might have to replace your propellers more frequently if not you won't and really the key is to take off and land in an area that's safe once you're in the air none of that matters right yeah, that's true. And these uh, these are carbon propellers. Mm -hmm. um, they spin at 2,000 RPM, and yet when we just we let dummy here drive it a little yeah. bit, and it was quieter than I expected. It's it's not a very loud machine. Yeah, so it's about an eighth of the noise consumption of a helicopter. Okay. Yeah, NASA has actually done studies on it, and we fell way below what the studies show. Oh, well, that's cool. Uh, and you have done a little bit of work. You've flown this over some cattle. Oh yeah, yes we have. And they didn't have a problem. Uh, they seemed to be looking at it and wondering what it was. They did not run far away from it. Maybe a couple did, but uh, the majority of them just stayed and stood there because the noise isn't like a helicopter where you have a thudding yeah, noise. That whoop, I think that sound. it mimics like a herd. Okay. But this is more, as you've heard, it's, it's more of a, a stable sound. I think maybe that has something to do with why they're not bothered by it so much. Well, that's good news, though, because I see the operations in the beep business for this machine yeah, in the future, and that's for sure. Well, Mick, this is an exciting product. Talk to me about your build plan. I mean, you've got some plans for 23 and 24. Can we talk about that for a minute? Yeah, uh, so in 2023, we want to do 100 units. And really, that's to learn the market. But more importantly, we're going to be hand building the first 100 units. So in the early days, you know, you really want to learn as much as possible. Uh, most of my team come from an automotive background, an aerospace background. The automotive side is all about manufacturing. Right. And everybody can build a prototype, but being able to manufacture is a different ball game. So making something reproducible, being able to do lot assessments so that we know that the frame you're getting in quantity is a solid frame. All of those components need to be tested. We need to put operational processes in place. So for the first 100, we're doing it and building out all those processes in that first year. In the second year, we want to do 1,000 units, and we want to do it with a more automated approach with some even 3D printed uh, aluminum parts. Well, that'll be exciting. And that's, <laughs> yeah, it'd be interesting to bring 3D printing to this kind of business. Yeah. That's absolutely for sure. Well, this has been a great conversation. Again, we're going to see this machine at the Farm Progress Show. We're excited about that. We're excited to have you as part of the Far Farm Progress Show. Mick Howitz, founder and CEO of Rise Aero Technologies, and of course, the Recon, which there are more of these coming. Mm -hmm. um, and we're looking forward to seeing you in Boone. Thanks a lot, sir. Thanks, Willie.